shut up and sit down. Howdy guys, it's Andy from Big Meg's Workshop Painting Studio and it's a, another painting tutorial. This time we're doing a Harlequin um, Skyweaver kit, but we're doing it with the uh, gun, gun platform variant. As always, we've got a uh, black base coat and we'll get straight into it. Uh, it's an interesting kit, this one. Um, very difficult to paint as Harlequins, as uh, you know, we tend to use some very uh, wacky colours. Uh, so uh, do apologise, obviously starting off with some airbrush work as it's a vehicle it makes life a little bit easier but it can be done by hand, uh, it's just a case of it takes a little bit longer uh, and sometimes getting the coats uh, smooth is a little bit more difficult. So here we are, we're getting a nice coat of royal purple, this is a Vallejo colour, you could probably use something along the lines of um, violet from scale 75 or uh, Wallop Purple, I believe, or it used to be what, what Wallop Purple used to be, at least, uh, by GW. Um, but any ri deep, rich uh, purple colour will work just as well. So, or, even though I used uh, the airbrush, I decided to do a mix of uh, Royal Purple and Purple. Now, Purple's a very uh, pinky colour, um, sort of like on a sort of a sc uh, screamer. Um, screaming pink sort of uh, level uh, although it's not over vibrant uh, I was hoping I, I was hoping it was going to be a little bit more um, colourful than this so I decided to go straight over with a much brighter colour uh, but I did try it with the um, more balanced um, colour just to see if it would get the uh, transition I wished unfortunately it didn't so uh, I went straight over with the uh, purple now as you can see it's a much more pinky colour uh, again much more like the uh, sort of the wacky transitions what you'd expect with um, a Harlequin vehicle. Now uh, as you can see I'm going um, down the centre, not so much on the high points, I'm just trying to get uh, some uh, contrast on there, uh, really just trying to highlight um, different sections of a vehicle uh, because we're going to go back over with some other stuff as well, we're going to do the traditional Harlequin checks, uh, that sort of thing, and uh, we're, you're going to use a lot of um, contrasting colours just to make it look a bit more interesting uh, as you'd expect the Harlequins uh, you want to be doing something a little bit different uh, a little bit more unusual the next colour we're using is Squid Pink this is a, um, a very vibrant very colourful colour and we're going that straight down the centre of the um, of the more pinky sections uh, really going to um, exaggerate this colour now and although it's uh, still a little bit uneven we're going to go back with some of the darker colours just to brighten up a bit uh, but it's not totally essential to have your uh, transitions uh, super smooth uh, because we're going to go over with the um, with the alternate colours as well uh, and what that's going to do it's going to tie a lot of it together now this isn't um, I did uh, kind of struggle with this as a Painting Harlequins is definitely something new for me. I've never done this sort of thing before. Um, so I spend a lot of time second guessing myself and uh, the end result, not totally happy with. But it's definitely uh, something I, I can do again and maybe uh, try and uh, um, get some more uh, practice on it. So back in with the Royal Purple now, uh, just to get that transition a bit more balanced and uh, this is going to uh, also add more depth to the um, recessed areas um, and as you can see I'm just sort of balancing out some of those uh, transitions bring them together so we're not quite so stark and uh, what that's going to do is just make things look a little bit more natural uh, so it flows better So uh, once we've got the um, first layers down, I whack a bit of a varnish on there just to protect it all because we're going to go be, uh, going to be going back over with the um, uh, Tamiya masking tape um, when we start doing the um, checkers. But before I do that, I've got to paint the uh, crewman. Now I didn't go over the top on this crewman um, because I wanted the vehicle to be the most uh, important part of this um, tutorial. As you can see, we've got a nice base coat of black, 
uh, just getting it all in there just to get rid of that paint colour uh, because we're going to be painting him much darker than the vehicle so it sort of stands out against it. As always we're using uh, really thin down paint this is um, just our uh, black prime what we use on the um, at the beginning of the video uh, just uh, thin it down just to get a good coverage and uh, give us something nice and um, smooth to work with. So once all that's dried I'm using Scale 75's Rift Green and this is going to go all over the um, dude's torso. Um, again, um, it's a dark colour, um, so it's a little bit different to what the um, colours are going to be. But it does uh, it does look well on the pi on the pilot and the crewman uh, doing the crew uh, the gunner in exactly the same way. Again, as I've said, not going over the top, not really focusing on the um, the checks and things, as uh, you can barely see a lot of the uh, detail on them once it's all in there. Once the uh, Rift Green's gone down it's Miskatonic Grey uh, by uh, Scale 75 now. You could use Demon at Hyde or um, Calestria Grey, anything along them sort of lines. Um, this is also going all over the um, face plates and the uh, weird sort of face plates will go on to the vehicle as well, um, which I've left off as I didn't want to use the airbrush on them. I'm just getting a nice coat of the um, of the light grey uh, to uh, give me something to work with. It's going to eff effectively just look a lot like a, a nice white colour. So back onto the um, the uniform again, and his uh, green skin green skin flesh. Uh, this is somewhere on the lines of um, war flesh. Uh, it's a nice highlight where we go over something like um, Caliban Green, that sort of colour. Um, it's a nice vibrant colour, uh, but if you go over in, in a nice thin coat, you can uh, build it up nicely so it doesn't actually um, stand out too, um, too dirty in an in a unpleasant way. It, ju it does um, blend nicely into the darker colour. Now, as you can see, we're going uh, uh, back into the um, airbrush work. This is a time-consuming section, and I really do envy anybody who's got the patience to paint a uh, full Harlequin army. I had to, obviously, as you can see, I um, cut out numerous sections of uh, uh, time masking tape uh, to create the diamonds, and then I had to place them on individually, uh, which took ages. Now, I should have gone further back uh, than I actually did, although as you can see I've also um, masked out the uh, windows, um, which did help in, uh, did help to protect obviously uh, the windows, so you can put the um, plastic windows on first. Also, it doesn't matter if you uh, uh, about the crewman if you don't want to if you want him to paint the window anyway, uh, as a lot of people do. Now, when you're using this um, small sections of uh, masking tape, as you can see, I'm using a set of tweezers. This makes life so much easier. And um, there you go. We've got a decent um, pattern there. And uh, we're going to go back over with the uh, airbrush. Um, and it's just going to go straight over the top. Now, as the um, kit's been varnished and um, all the uh, checks are in position ready for us to get working. So back over now with the Rift Green uh, which is a nice dark green as I've said before something along the lines of uh, Caliban Green also same similar sort of uh, colour to Misfits Green what, we've used, what I use a lot. Um, it's a nice dark green quite a lot of blue in there so it contrasts really nicely against the uh, pinks and the purples. So uh, take your time with this. You want a decent cover. You want a decent coat on there before you can start on the highlights. So once the uh, first coat is down, it is Goblin Flesh by Scale Seventy Five. Um, any lighter green, sort of quite yellowy colour, will work. And you're just getting that um, the up the leading edges 
I say leading edges, it's not really the way I'm doing it. I'm going up towards the, um, where the pilot sits, uh, the cockpit, um, and starting. So the, the fade is working light, uh, dark to light uh, from front to back. As you can see, it's uh, just bringing them colours up together slowly. Once the goblin flesh is uh, down, it's toxic waste green. This is quite yellow uh, green. It's almost on, um, on the yellow end of things. I'm just sort of blending that colour down. Um, getting uh, a nice transition between the uh, different colours. Um, really uh, paying attention to the um, the gradient on what I'm doing. I'm wanting to leave some of the darker colours in there as uh, it really does add to the effect. And right at the front of the nose it is black. Uh, that's going straight over the top as well. Um, I'm at, uh, I do spend a little bit of time just bringing the uh, the rift green out again, uh, just to uh, tidy things up and just to add a, um, add a little bit more of a, a transition. And there you are. After taking the um, after taking the masking tape off, it gives you a nice effect of um, the of the um, diamonds. And I've then gone back round and lined them out just to get a nice um, sort of get add them nice breaks into it. You do have to spend a little bit of time just uh, tidying things up a little bit. And for the gems, it is a navy blue. I want the uh, navy. I want a blue on there to complement both the green and the purple, uh, which may, um, really adds uh, a nice uh, extra uh, level layer to the. Um, two gems it really brings them both together with it once the navy blues down and I've got a decent quality coat on there it's now moving on to Mediterranean blue I'm painting from around about uh, three quarters of um, all the way to from the bottom all the way to the top about three quarters of the way so I'm leaving just a touch of that um, darker blue out um, just to uh, leave a nice corner like a half moon shape um, where the uh, the light would hit. Once the Mediterranean blue's gone down, it is um, it is Tesla blue. <laughs> Apologies there for the pause. And I'm doing much the same thing as a, a, as I did with the navy bl um, Mediterranean blue, leaving again. Around about um, a quarter of the uh, na um, Mediterranean blue showing. As you can tell, with uh, with any Eldar vehicle, this is quite uh, any Eldar model. This is quite an important part, as they tend to be loaded with these things. Uh, so just take your time. It's generally worth. It's t always worth it in the long run because uh, the well painted gems um, do make a big difference to the model. So on to the next level, and we're leaving like uh, just the bottom um, quarter of the uh, of the gem um, in the in the new car, which is uh, wolf grey, or you could do uh, something along the lines of a, a turquoise, anything along that sort of line. You want a real nice sort of light bluey grey colour, um, and that will just uh, give you a nice transitional highlight before you do your last. Um, last bit with the um, white and again you're keeping that half moon shape coming out uh, just uh, for your last bits and now using um, the same brush I'm doing a little line across the bottom edge of the um, of the gems and a dot in the opposite corner in the deepest um, darkest section and that gives you the illusion of um, a transparent um, 
gem uh, with light hitting from above. Now you can do this in any direction you want, but you just you, you do want it to be uh, consistent throughout the model as always, uh, because the light will be be travelling from uh, one general direction. So I've added a, a little bit of a metallic colour now. Um, this is Retributor Armour by G Dub, and um, it's really rich, really vibrant, ready uh, gold. And this is just going all over um, the uh, weird trim looking things. So these like grills, um, the fin cover, the thing, the sort of wing looking things at the back, uh, that sort of thing. Just to uh, it breaks up the, um, the flatness. It also adds a little bit more colour to the model, uh, making things look a little bit more interesting as well. Now, I did like using the uh, Retributor armor. It's quite a strong uh, pigment, so uh, it goes on really nicely. Uh, but it is very, very bright, so it does need toning down a bit. So for which I chose uh, Reclaimed Flesh, um, which is a uh, it really um, works well with the Retributor armor, as it's uh, quite it's uh, heavy quite heavily on the red end of things so it uh, just really uh, matches the um, Retributor nicely onto the um, engine exhaust, so I decided to paint them in a silver um, just sort of, again, don't want too much of the same metallic colour um, so I went with thrash metal um, lead belt or iron brake would work equally fine uh, this is just the one what was um, I had to hand up a bit, uh, um, to be fair I uh, didn't really think too heavily about uh, what colour I wanted the en engine sections as uh, you can barely see them so as long as you've got a nice coverage on them with a little bit of depth uh, you don't need to go over the top um, if it's just for your uh, your tabletop purposes. So once the uh, Reetland had dried, it's uh, non oil goes onto the um, trash metal, and we're using Genna's gold all over the uh, the gold work. Uh, again, really vibrant red colour uh, in this gold. Uh, quite a strong pigment, so it really makes the uh, the armour looked really over the top and wild uh, which was definitely the um, the feeling I wanted to come from this I wanted to I wanted it to look very over the top uh, and I think this colour really worked well for that can trim some of this section out. Okay, after the Genner's Gold, it is now Psychorex Bronze, and this is just going to um, tone it down a bit. It's going to have some nice highlights to it as well. And what that's going to do is just to uh, just soften the over the topness of it and uh, add a few nice highlights. And we'll just because uh, although we wanted it a little bit over the top, it still needs to look right. And uh, the Psychorex Bronze is just the right color, just to uh, tone the colors out a little bit, and it gives that sort of worn uh, feel to the gold. So now we're doing the weapons, uh, which will be the uh, final section. Um, I'll start off with Iroko by Scale 75. This is basically um, something I use instead of Xandri Dust because I wanted the um, weapons to look bony um, or some kind of bone compound. As uh, from what I remember, Eldar weapons are meant to be made from spirit, uh, from you know the um, wraith bone. So I, painted, I chose to paint these up in 
a, a bony colour as well. So um, Zandri Dust or any of them like um, sort of colours would work really well. And Agrox Earthshade just to uh, add the uh, extra depth all over the uh, weapons just to get things uh, moving. After the agrass has dried out, um, back over with the Iroko, uh, leaving some of the uh, Agrax Earth shade um, shading in there, and uh, just starting to tidy things up a bit, getting them uh, colours just right, uh, adding a little bit of the birch to it as well, um, just to start off getting some highlights in. As always, keeping the paint really thin. Uh, we don't want these. Um, uh, you don't want to rush this thing. Get it done too quickly. Uh, thick coats generally make things look bad. So I added some more birch into it, as you can see we're starting to pick up our sort of bone colour now. Uh, ivory works really well for this as well as it's got that sort of nice yellow hue to it. So you're just starting to pick out the details with the um, nice bony colours before you uh, add the final edge highlights onto it like with a white or something. And just added a little bit of burnt umbra, um, dotted around the model just to grime it up a bit, make it more 40k. Uh, and just to make it look a little bit um, bad and bruised, I don't think um, any vehicle in 40k should be clean and would generally look better. And burnt umbra is a really good colour because it's quite um, gentle, uh, it doesn't change the colour of pigment too much. And if you can really get it right, it really does work well to uh, add in some extra depth to the model. I also add a little bit of, uh, of the uh, grime to the top as well, just to tone some of them colours together, and just to add that extra bit of uh, that, that extra bit of uh, coherency. I suppose I think was the right word. Probably not. Uh, just to bring the colours together nicely, anyway. Anyway, that's enough from me. Uh, that is a Harlequin jet bike thingy, uh, and. Uh, yeah, it's an interesting process. I definitely do envy uh, anybody who's got the patience to do that on a on a, uh, a large scale, such as like an entire army. So fair play to you guys. Uh, definitely something I could never do. Not my best work. Definitely some things I'd really uh, like to uh, brush up on uh, as far as the uh, checkers go. But it's uh, definitely worth having a crack at. Uh, really does um, open your eyes to some of the. Uh, more intricate patterns what you can work with so always thank you guys for watching this one uh, i do hope you enjoyed it and i, I definitely hope you uh, learned something if you're interested in uh, checking us out uh, please hit like hit subscribe share with your friends check us out on patreon um, you get early access to videos plus a whole heap of other things as well and as always we've got some huge thank yous our thank yous to our patreons huge thank yous to your boys matt ludwig d um, d -Wack. Mark, Dave and Tom, you're our top paying patrons, so huge thank you to you. Without you, we couldn't um, we couldn't be able to do this at all. Also, thanks to the Outpost there, our affiliate link. There's a link in the description. Standard 15 to 20% off from your f uh, friendly local gaming store. Plus, if you use our links in the description, we also get 5% kickback as well. So that really does help keep the lights on and give us uh, extra toys to play with. So thanks for watching this one, guys, and we shall catch you in the next one. Bye-bye. Shut up and sit down.